Hi everyone, my name is Teresa Ellen Arianus, T-E-A, and this is Tea Time Adventures on YouTube. I'm going to be doing this little mask, and um, it's from the mask bar, and it is a little green giraffe. I think this is the last of my mask bar um, facial masks that I picked up at my big Target haul that is actually posted back on uh, Instagram, not here on YouTube. Um, and I thought, you know, just something fun. It's cute, you know. Um, it's technically Sunday. This is going to be my mask Monday. I think out of um, most of the YouTube ladies that I follow, I'm the one that is farthest west, except for my new uh, newbie sister <laughs> in YouTube channels. That is uh, Shannon Carroll. She's up the coast from me. We're both West Coast girls. Um, and uh, I'm gone all day long. So seven o'clock to at least five thirty, six o'clock at night, I'm unavailable. <laughs> so I'm going to tape this on Sundays and upload it Monday morning before I clock in for work. So let's get to this. Um, cute little mask. It's a calming mask. It doesn't tell me what it is without tiny, tiny ingredients. So I'm just going to put it on and talk. <laughs> so. Ooh, it's green. It's not easy being green. <laughs> Kermit smile. Smells nice. Doesn't smell like frogs. Who was it that doesn't like frogs? Jean Louise? No frogs for Jean Louise. <laughs> okay. Wow. This little guy's complicated. Um, pull this little nose flap down without ripping it. Okay, so back with the bangs. Let's see, you got to get the little horns in place, because what's a giraffe without his horns, right? So. I'm going to have to adjust this. <laughs> I don't know if it really looks like a giraffe. I've got the little horns up here, but they're just going to be going up into my hairline. <laughs> Something like that. Okay, <laughs> little ears. Little nose, looks like a green pig, but I'm okay with that. <laughs> I don't know. I don't think it really looks all that much giraffe at this point. Um, looking into my mirror over here, sorry. Um, looks more like a green pig. Wink, wink. So, alrighty, and what I'm going to do to while away the time is give you some more getting to know me information. And it's going to be top five. So the first thing I'm going to do is talk about my top five desserts. Um, my ultimate dessert is my birthday cake, in which case this is a German chocolate cake with coconut pecan frosting. Um, it's something that my mother made every year for me. And uh, this is back when frostings came in a box. You added the butter and milk and cooked it on the stove. And then added it warm to the top of the cake. And then you could put the cake in the refrigerator. Nothing out of a tube, hopped and ready to go. You mix the butter with the milk on the stove. So that dates me right there, probably. <laughs> That's going to be irritating, I know. Um, the next favorite dessert is pecan pie. Why? Because it's super sweet. <laughs> and I can handle super, super sweet. Um, I think I was introduced... Um, here in Santa Barbara, there used to be a restaurant called The Bonanza. And it was sort of ordering exactly what you wanted with your steak or your meat, but then you could pick the sides. So it was a little cafeteria-like, um, but yet you sat down and then they special cooked your 
meat and then you picked what sides you want. And that was the first time I had had pecan pie. Um, and I've loved it ever since. <laughs> um, my next third favorite uh, would be um, a, we used to have a pharmacy called um, Thrifty's, Thrifty's uh, Pharmacy. And it is now morphed, I believe, into Rite Aid. But they still carry the Thrifty brand ice cream. And my favorite growing up was the vanilla ice cream with chocolate chips. They weren't chips or chunks. They were actually very delicate little flakes. So the moment that chocolate hit your tongue, it would melt. And I prefer that. Nothing to get stuck in your teeth. Nothing that you have to pry out with a crowbar. Or just sit there and brush until all the chocolate comes out. Not these huge chunks of anything. They're just they were just delicate little flakes. Um, my fourth favorite dessert would be a caramel brownie. Um, I make what I call the everything but the kitchen sink brownies. A layer of brownies, a layer of walnuts and caramel, uh, another layer of brownies, um, a layer of baby M and M sprinkled on top. So everything but the kitchen sink. Um, oh, I also put chips in with the caramel and the walnuts too. <laughs> I can handle super sweet. And then my fifth favorite would be New York cheesecake. Um, my husband's family was Jewish and so um, they would take me to places like Cantor's down in Los Angeles near um, Bel Air, Beverly Hills, and I think there's another one uh, Midtown LA as well whenever we would visit them. Um, and uh, I learned to like New York Cheesecake, went on a double date with my husband's um, cousin and her girlfriend, and we went to the Cheesecake Factory and just loved it there as well. So, uh, the next series of items, top five, is going to be fruits. My top five fruits, I am a California girl, and my aunt and uncle owned a small avocado orchard, so I grew up eating avocados all the time. Um, so that is one of my top fruits. It got a seed in it. It's a fruit. Um, the next would probably be honey crisp apples. I probably didn't discover these until after I was 50 years old. I just grew up on Macintosh and to me sometimes those get mealy really quickly. I don't like the the tartness of of a lot of the green apples. They're just too much of a sour taste to me. Um, so when I discovered Honeycrisp, it's just big. It's bite your teeth into it. L satisfying crunch. Um, and it is very sweet honey crisp apple. I love those. Um, my next would be strawberries. Again, living in California, we have uh, strawberry fields everywhere. People can grow them in their backyards. Um, there are even decorative varieties of strawberry vines. <laughs> Um, the next would probably be green grapes, green, gre green, seedless grapes, white grapes, whatever you want to call them. Um, I prefer those over the, the darker variety or the red ones. Um, and it definitely has to be seedless. I don't like finding the tiny little pips while I'm crunching away. Um, pair that with some Parmigiano Reggiano. Oh, yeah, baby. <laughs> um, and I guess then my last fruit would be tomatoes because I can just pop the little cherry or grape tomatoes in my mouth, just like they're grapes, just eat them away. Just like that satisfying crunch that, that resistance when your skin uh, or your teeth sink into it. Love that. Love that. It's just not just the bright taste, but it's the texture and the crunch. Um, the next item that is going to be on my uh, top five is top five animals slash birds. Um, my number one, is wolves. I've uh, loved those since I was a child. It was reinforced again when um, I was part of a, a comic book fandom called Elf Quest, and that was by um, Wendy and Richard Peeney of Warp Graphics. And uh, I went on trips across the country to meet friends in Michigan, Oklahoma, Kansas. Um, I used to write day in the life type of stories for my characters that I created. Um, in various different uh, fan club uh, newsletters. And uh, so I've always uh, loved wolves because of that. Next is tigers. Um, maybe that's cliche. I don't know. But 
I just think they're um, majestic and I prefer them over most of the other uh, big cats like lions. Cheetahs are kind of cool, but uh, tigers, tigers are it for me. Um, of more significance, I'm going to say uh, as a whole, the corvids, not covids, <laughs> corvids. <laughs> These include uh, ravens and crows and California scrub jays. And um, there's just something that calls to me from them that... Um, I've had an individual crow fly overhead and what seemed like a magical moment dropped a feather right in front of me. I still have that feather. Um, the same thing has happened to me with a blue heron um, as well as a, an egret as well. So I've got those three feathers. Um, but um, the corvids as a whole uh, fascinate me. Um, same thing with raptors, red tail hawks. Uh, golden eagles, peregrine falcons, all of those in the uh, raptor category have always been also um, something that I've loved to learn about at the local natural history museum and watch on TV, etc. Um, and then the final animal would be owls. Um, I am atheist with uh, quite a bit of pagan tendencies and spirituality, and anytime I have done any sort of pagan ritual, Wiccan ritual, whichever you want to call it, um, owls have called. Um, or I've had a crow land on my fence outside and just kind of nod and bow to me. Um, so to me, those, those, those are significant animals in my life. Um, may not have ever touched one in real life, but I've had some conversations with some crows and I've listened to um, great horned owls calling to each other, mated pairs calling to each other in this neighborhood when I started doing rituals that I had never heard them before. I've been in this apartment 30 years, and until I started doing rituals, I had never heard an owl in my entire life. Oops. <laughs> my light went off, sorry. It's just a, a lighted mirror. It's not even a ring light, so at some point in time, it's all, yeah, you're done here. <laughs> um, top five fandoms. I have been in fandoms since I was an 11 year old girl, 12 year old girl, going with uh, my best friends to go see Star Wars. But even before that, I was indoctrinated into the sci-fi world with Star Trek. So I am a lover of both of those major fandoms. And um, I grew up watching Star Trek with my older brother, he's 18 years older than I am, and I would sit in his lap and with our dog at the time, and we'd watch Star Trek. By then, I think it was probably a repeat, um, but it's always held uh, great memories for me. And then I started going to um, every movie uh, that came out for Star Wars, the trilogy, the trilogy of trilogies, uh, the extra movies. Um, I try and go with my best friend, Leah Battle, and uh, and uh, her other best friend, uh, Jen Riddell. And, uh, and uh, at the time, those were our maiden names. So um, it's just been something that's... Uh, I used to go to science fiction conventions. My first one, I was 16 years old. And the last one that I went to was when uh, Star Trek Enterprise had been canceled. And the stars had just been told. And they came out on stage and had to tell the fans that they were not renewed, and the sets had already been struck. Um, third fandom is for a uh, Netflix series called Sense8, S-E-N-S-E, -E, the number eight. And I'm still active in that, even though it was only two seasons on Netflix. It was by the Wachowski sisters, Lana and Lily, who used to be the Wachowski brothers, um, I'm actually the admin for a WhatsApp chat group on Sense8, so um, there are a lot of young people across the globe that are of LGBTQ plus orientation. I'm probably one of the few straight people in the group, and I'm called what's called the Cluster Mom. So um, I'm the one that kind of keeps track of everybody across the globe. We've got um, one person in Russia, one person in Iran, a couple in the Philippines and um, Indonesia. There's only a few in the United States in our group. And then the rest are spread across um, Europe, uh, Spain, Turkey, France, Germany, a lot in India as well. So um, they keep me young. <laughs> 
Um, the last would, two would be um, Friends. I'm not active in any fandom, but I own every single <laughs> season on DVD. I follow all of the stars on Instagram. Um, I follow a lot of the little memes and short clips on Instagram. Uh, same thing with Outlander, which is a series on Amazon's um, subchannel Stars. And um, again, I'm not active in that fandom with other people, but I follow all of the stars um, and, uh, and uh, a lot of the fan groups I follow, but I'm not active with them. And then the last set of things of top five that I think I'll do, since this is at the 15 minute mark, is going to be hobbies. And I'll just be brief on those. Um, besides watching YouTube, <laughs> which seems to be a take up a lot of my time. Um, and I'm okay with it. Um, I do like watching TV as well. Um, I do not have cable. I have uh, Netflix and Amazon Prime. I've got Hulu and Disney and Stars, um, And that's really enough for me. I uh, lost cable a long time ago when my husband got sick. Um, I think I saw maybe the last... Was I on season five or six of Lost <laughs> when I lost cable? And I've never... Um, never uh, brought it back. So um, I also like to color and uh, listen to music and that takes up my time really. Oh, and I do like beading. I bead as well. Um, so I guess that's it for now. Um, I'm going to go ahead and take this off and uh, rub in extra essence. And I guess that's it for now. I thank you all for watching and <laughs> listening to my top five. <laughs> If anybody else wants to do them, feel free. <laughs> I just make this up as I go along. So um, have a lovely night, everybody. Have a lovely Sunday. Have a lovely Monday. Hashtag Mask Monday. Hashtag Mask Monday, ladies. Peace out. Take care, everybody. Bye.